Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron and welcome back today to another video. I do apologise that there wasn't a video on Wednesday. I was a little bit hungover, went out on Tuesday night in Cancun and felt the worst of it on Wednesday morning, which of course was Wednesday afternoon for you guys. So I do apologise that there wasn't a video on Wednesday. We are back. It is Friday. It's a little bit late UK time. So again, I do apologise about that. We've been doing the jet skis today and it's been quite a manic afternoon. So again... I apologise that this video is going out a little bit late. Of course, we're going to talk about the AS Monaco game today. And we're going to talk about a couple of transfer news as well. So, Everton won their first pre-season game today, or we picked up our first victory in pre-season. Should I rephrase that too? Beating Monaco by one goal to nil over in Switzerland. It looked absolutely amazing. The pitch looked um, decent, you know, the... The scenery was looked absolutely stunning over in the Alps. Everton picked up a 1-0 victory, which of course is Marco Silva's first victory of the pre-season um, tour. Seamus Coleman with the goal, a good goal as well, quite sort of dangerous goal, put his head in a dangerous position and ended up coming away with the reward. Numan Yassi nearly scored in an absolute mad rainbow flick-esque scorpion kick thing that he definitely didn't mean, but... Again, fair play to him, he nearly scored it. But yeah, coming away with the victory against, like I said... <clears throat> We've mentioned before, a decent, decent European team. A decent team in the French League. A team that have got, you know, a decent set of players. Um, and it was a really, really big test for Everton. And we come away with a victory, of course, after the defeat to Cario Banji Sharks. Um, a draw to Cario Banji Sharks and a defeat on penalties. And then, of course, a draw against Sion earlier in the week. It was fantastic for Marco Silva and the lads to pick up our first victory of the preseason. And you can start to see that the players are starting to get fitter. They're starting to get sharper. They're starting to really, really get their head down now and work card obviously coming up to the Premier League season and the start of the Premier League season on the 10th of August we've seen Luca Dean in action nearly scored an absolute wonder goal Martin Stecklenberg saving a penalty as well we've seen other first teamers in action as well so absolutely fantastic to see obviously the main thing is we come away with the victory a really really good goal by Seamus Coleman um, and of course like I said a, a win against the team that really are a decent European side they're no pushover side they're not you know a stupid side from a, a mad country that, you know, we aren't really a test in a good side in the French League. And, you know, it's important that obviously we come away with the win. And it's important that you could see the players were, were gaining in fitness and they were gaining in sharpness as well. And you can see that obviously the work on the team and pitches is paying off on the pitch as well. And hopefully we start to see performances quite similar to that one and improving as well as the pre-season goes on. In terms of transfer news, there's been a couple of rumours over the last couple of days. I want to speak about a couple of them. Firstly, Rafael Leo. Um, from Benfica he was rumoured to be in well Everton are rumoured to be interested in him um, rumoured to cost around 40 odd million pounds it's really really interesting one there's a lot of other clubs that are interested in the player as well I think Arsenal are interested in him as well so I suppose we'll have to see where that one sort of goes over the um, the next coming uh, days and weeks Renio Jesus as well I probably butchered that first name but we'll just call him Jesus for now he's a 17 year old um won the kid basically from Brazil playing in the Brazilian league he's under the same agency as Richarlison and Bernard and Everton are rumoured to be bidding £40 million pounds for him now this kid is apparently the dog's bollocks. He's apparently got all the talent in the world, all the potential in the world. Still only 17 years old, so it'll be interesting to see if we did pay that much for, for that sort of player, if we paid that much for the player at such a young age, whether he'd go straight into the first team, whether he'd be put into the under-23s, whether he'd be loaned back out for a season or two. It'll be really, really interesting to see. But what you you see with young players sort of over the last sort of few years is that we'll buy a player and if they go directly back out on loan, you know, sometimes they can just continue that sort of pattern of going on loan. You don't really see them. Henry on your core, was a, a prime example of that. Um, hopefully, if we do make the signing of Jesus, it's not the same because he's going to cost us a considerable amount of money. Being 17 years old, never playing in the Premier League, never playing in a league sort of as competitive as the Premier League, it's going to be tough for him to come in and, you know, just get going straight away and be good enough to be, you know, playing week in, week out in the Premier League and be our number nine that we've all been calling for for the last sort of uh, few weeks and months. But it'll be really, really interesting to see how that one sort of goes over the next couple of days and weeks as well. Some more transfer activity in uh, the Kurt Zuma situation as well. Frank Lampard's come out and said he does see Kurt Zuma as a squad player. Um, he sees him, you know, as a player that can improve Chelsea and definitely a player that can have some part in the Premier League campaign next season. Now, there's a couple of things in this. There's one thing that says, well, that's Lampard saying he's definitely not come out and said, listen, we want to sell him. He's not good enough. He's got no future at us. 
that's one thing. Another thing is that's Lampard coming out and saying, well, Kertzum is a squad player. He's not necessarily going to play every week. He's not necessarily going to be our first choice centre-back. So maybe we're open to offers. And I think this is Lampard and Chelsea playing the game of, listen, we're not going to give you them for 20 million. We're not going to give you them 25 million. We'd be happy to sell, but we want 40 odd million pound for them. And I think this is now where it's down to Marcel Brands now to, you know, sort of sit there and go, is he worth that much, that much money? Is he worth that what they want for him? And are we realistically going to pay that much money for him? And if we do, fair enough, we get the transfer done. But it's become quite sort of clear over the last couple of days that Chelsea aren't just going to, you know, put him out. He's not going to be on their list of players that they just want to get rid of to get off the wage bill as soon as possible. Lampard clearly sees him as a player that can play some sort of part in their Premier League campaign next season. Uh, obviously, especially with the transfer ban as well, it's going to be difficult for them getting players in um, and keeping hold of the players as well, really. So Lampard's probably covering his back saying, listen, he's not going to be on the list of players that desperately need to leave the club. However, if we got a, you know, a good enough bid, we'd be looking to sell him. And I think... A good enough bid for Kurt Zuman in their eyes would be upwards of uh, of a 40 odd million pounds. So we'll have to see how that one sort of plays out as well and see how Marcel Brands um, plays that one out as well over the next couple of weeks and months. But yeah, biggest news from today, I suppose, is the win against Monaco. Absolutely fantastic victory. A really, really good goal by Seamus Coleman. Some really, really good bits of play as well during the game. Like I said, Luca Dean nearly scored an absolutely fantastic volley. And Umani Asi nearly put him one in um, by doing some mad scorpion kick over and kick thing. But yeah, that's about it for today. Please do leave a like if you have enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button if you're new as well. It really, really does mean a massive amount to me. Um, and like I said, if you haven't already, hit the like button. It'd be really, really appreciative. I'll be back on Monday for another video. Hopefully, there's a little bit more news and hopefully we've got a little bit further in the negotiations for Jesus and maybe even the negotiations for Kurt Zuma as well. But anyway, that's going to do it from me. Please hit the like button if you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new and I'll see you soon on the Mighty Blues.